everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I wanted to do a special video today with the Aya Next. This also works on the Aya Pro, but what I'm running here is the Steam Deck Steam OS 3. It's a custom um, fork called Hollow Image, and I've taken that ISO and done a bunch of custom changes to it as well. So I'm going to go through and talk about it. I'm, I will be releasing an alpha build. SteamOS is working. You can go and you can actually use Steam. You can log in, download your games, log into your games. This is GTA 5 online right now. Wi-Fi and touchscreen are working. As you can see, there's a lobby full of players here. I think you get the point. So here we're going to exit out to Steam OS, well, the, the launcher front end. And turn this down a little bit. So as you can see, there's the collection of games here. You want to make sure that they're controller friendly, obviously. You can tap things. Touch screen works. I've tested Apex, that works as well. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch five minutes of Apex, I'm just showing you that it runs well. So as you can see, I'm 
Now, <clears throat> there is RetroArch included in Steam as well. I'm sure many of you know that. This is the list of cores that are in here. They do work, and you can add your own as well by dragging and dropping them into the folder if you should feel the need to compile your own. As you can see, I've added a bunch here. I might actually release or include this in a future build. The current build has Steam out of the box and the Steam Deck experience, but it doesn't have any of the additional emulation or things outside of Steam installed. That's sort of up to you to do. If there's enough interest, I will release a second build that has the emulation stuff I'm about to show you included. So here you leave the Steam UI and you go to the desktop. Now there's a couple of things I want to show you here. First one, don't touch the Goodix LCD folder. Just leave it alone. And second, this won't be here. Ryzen ADJ. If you want to use it, just Google it and download or clone the Git and just run make. There's instructions right on the Git. And I'll show you an example of a script I made to save myself effort. Actually, I want to run 35 watt. So, I'm going to leave it on this screen here for a minute. It says sudo space slash home slash inext slash Ryzen ADJ slash build slash Ryzen ADJ. And then I'm just going to move the camera forward for you here and keep it there for a moment. Now, you might want to pause the video here and take notice of this. You can use this command to control your TDP. And what I've done basically is I've made it into a script so that I can just click on it and execute it to control the TDP. I don't even have to do anything, I just double click and it changes my TDP. So now that that's done, there's something else I've installed on my end that you can build your own also from Git or I can include it in a future build if there's enough interest. It's called Archie Pie. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's Retro Arena or Retro Pie for Arch Linux. I'm not gonna go too in depth with this here. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick look at it. I'll launch a couple games, show you how it works. Much like any other build, you can, um, I guess I didn't do it that time. I messed it up by launching it from Steam. This does launch from Steam, but you can't launch games. You can just launch the emulation station menu. See if that helps. Ah, there we go, that fixed it. The first thing you're going to want to do when you load Emulation Station, besides configure the controller, is you want to make sure you go into Settings, go to RetroArch, and you want to hotkey the Exit button, or the Menu button, I should say and also possibly an exit button, because it's not done and you'll get trapped inside of games. I'm not going to actually go too deep into gameplay. <clears throat> this isn't the video for that. I'm just showing you guys generally that it works and how it looks. So 
So this is a 32 gigabyte SD card or external hard drive image. You can flash it to any size of external storage and then just use Gparted to resize. You get the point. With PSP, for the first time you run it, you're going to want to connect a keyboard. You're going to want to go to settings and controls, control mapping, and go all the way down here to where it says pause. Make that your select button, and then just kind of back out. And now, when you press select, it brings you into the PSP menu. The reason why that's important is because you have no way to exit a game. You want to make sure you do that. The same is true if you decide to install Yuzu. You also will have no way to exit a game currently, so just make sure you set a hotkey to exit Yuzu. You can set the select button to be home, for example, as well as select, because it won't do anything pressed by itself, and then you can press these two buttons in combination or something to exit Yuzu. As you just saw, it's at 5x resolution. PS3 and Yuzu work as well. After this, I'll show you a Yuzu game quickly. See, because I've hotkeyed that now, I have a way to exit the emulator. PS2 might be a little bit difficult, but there's a solution to that. I just haven't implemented it yet. For Dolphin, it's the same kind of deal. You want to launch the GUI first, and then configure your controllers. The same will be true for Citra as well. I'll show you what I mean quickly because I have a mouse and keyboard connected anyway. So when you install Citra, you're probably going to use Snap for Citra and several of the other emulators. PSP you can just directly install if you wish, or you can use the, uh, the Archie Linux script, Archie Pi. PS3 as well. You can get that from a Snap. So, we're going to do Yuzu quickly before I end the video, just to show you guys. Now, I moved that. So, we're going to have to... It's in Archie Pie. 
all the way down at the bottom. You're going to want to make sure to go into configuration, go to controls, and make sure that your Xbox 360 controller is enabled. You can run this, this particular emulator because you can go into configure here and configure a hotkey. And then you can go into the controls and configure home button. So let's say I did it with select, right? Leave button six. I think I did it with this click button nine. Right, yes. So I can just use a hotkey to exit Yuzu now. So you can run it through Steam because of that directly if you want to, instead of having to use emulation station. So as you can see there, performance is quite nice, not only visually, but it just runs very smoothly as well. The same is true for many games. I've only tried about 20, but the majority of them work very well. PS3 does work as well. As I, as I said earlier, Citra does too. You can see kind of a list of what's here. You can install Lutris for wine games and GOG games outside of Steam. And that's going to about do it for this video. There will be a download link in the description. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.